this hand. You don't have a Bible, there should be one near you or around you, or and I have some up here. We'll get you one if you need one. Leviticus chapter number 27. <laughs> We're going to look at uh, the subject of esteem. Esteem. What we what we esteem. Uh, the word esteem and estimate can kind of go hand in hand. This week, uh, downstairs, I had I had an electrician come over and give me an estimate, right? And they're usually free estimates. Uh, HVAC guy come out and kind of take a look at it, give me another estimate. And what is an estimate? They, they esteem the value of their work at a certain level, they give you a price for that, right? And they say, okay, uh, this estimate is going to be approximately, you know, $75 an hour plus parts, right? And so they, they give you something that's going to be proximity, but they're valuing uh, their work, they're valuing uh, their trade and, and their skills. And they're going to give you some type of a value to that. And in Leviticus chapter number 27, we see what the Lord values um, some of these people and individuals for whatever various reasons. I'm not going to get into why uh, this morning. It's just what the Bible says that He does. And then, but we're going to look at something similar to this as far as uh, the value of things. Okay. Look at Leviticus chapter 27, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by their, uh, by thy estimation. All right, their value. And they, and, and thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. So you have a value that's placed on a, a male that's in between this age group and, um, that is, is consecrated. Verse 4. And if a female, then thy estimation shall be 30 shekels. And if it be from 5 years old, even unto 20 years old, thy estimation shall be of the male uh, 20 shekels. And for the female, 10 shekels. And if it be for a month old, even to 5 <coughs> years old, then thy estimation shall be of the Lord, uh, shall be of the male 5 shekels of silver. And for the female, thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver. And if it be from 60 years old and above, it, if it be a male, then thy estimation shall be 15 shekels, and for the female, 10 shekels. But if he be poor, then thy estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to his ability, that vowed, uh, that vow shall, be, shall the priest value him. And it goes on and talks about some different beasts. And so there was responsibilities associated with all these in the functioning of the temple and the work around uh, the place that would give them a certain value and, and whatever they're supposed to contribute uh, to uh, their, their group and their temple and to their, uh, their nation. And, uh, and it's kind of an interesting, it's interesting uh, uh, section of scripture, uh, all these different estimations and values. Um, but this morning... What I want to look at is as uh, there's many things in Scripture that talk about what this is valued at and this is valued at. Um, but this morning, I want us to evaluate in our own life uh, what we esteem, uh, what we hold in high value. And um, I want you to take your Bibles, just look over it a little bit over at Deuteronomy chapter number 32. Deuteronomy chapter number 32. Giving what we esteem its proper value, its proper value. Uh, as Christians, uh, oftentimes we value the right things, but sometimes we don't give them uh, their proper place in our life, and their, uh, their proper position. And in Deuteronomy chapter number 32, look at verse number 15, Deuteronomy 32, verse number 15, this is what it says, it says, but uh, Jeshurun waxed fat and kit, thou art waxed and fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art grown. Uh, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Uh, this man had taken it so easy for so long that he become lazy and fat, 
And there's some things that led up to the place where he was at here spiritually where he forsook his God. And uh, you say, well, what, what caused that? Well, you keep reading along. Look at verse 17. And they sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of that rock they begat thee, uh, of that rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And so what they did is the things that they had esteemed high, they eventually didn't put them in their proper uh, place. And they didn't value them like they should have. They didn't value the Lord. They took Him for granted and began to sacrifice to other gods and become lazy, both physically and spiritually, and forsook their God and went after other things. And that can be uh, done in, even in our life where... Uh, we value things, but we don't give them their proper place. We don't, we don't give them uh, the value that they deserve. We don't go after them like we ought to. And, and of course, uh, if we don't have the main thing, the main thing, everything else around uh, that main thing begins to collapse. And that main thing is, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. If we don't value Him and esteem Him and put the right estimate uh, as far as what we value the Lord at, then we are not going to uh, have a proper balance of everything else. And I want to look at that here this morning a little bit. Look at first, uh, or Isaiah chapter number 53. 53. Isaiah chapter number 53. Esteeming the Lord. Now, of course, this world is an esteemed God whatsoever. I mean, uh, uh, in fact, you might get a lot of definitions of who God is. And, and uh, this world has created many gods. Gods according to their own imagination. A God that is according to their own opinions. Uh, you, you talk to anything, anyone about um, some of the principles and the guidelines that the Lord lays out in Scripture, and they, they may disagree with those things. They say, well, that's, that's not the God of love. That's, why, why would He do that? Or, no, my God wouldn't do that. And, and, and they have this idea of who God is. And, of course, uh, what we need to do is get a biblical understanding of who God is and hold Him up high and reverence Him and love Him and esteem Him for who He is. I'm thankful this morning... Uh, that my God doesn't change just because politics and people and cultures change. God doesn't change. And we can hold on to that. We can uh, remain firm in, in who He is. The Bible says here in Isaiah 53, verse 1, it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For He shall grow up before Him as a tender plant, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when... We shall see Him. There is no beauty that we should desire Him. One of the most difficult things that the children of Israel had with Jesus Christ was that He came from a, uh, a lineage of, that was according to David, but it wasn't in a location, and there was nothing spectacular about Him. There was nothing spectacular about Joseph or Mary that, that one could uh, draw themselves to and say, hey, this is the Messiah. This is the one that we've been waiting for. And because of that, they had a hard time receiving his message. Oh, he's unlearned. Oh, he hangs out with, with harlots and publicans. And oh, no good thing cometh out of Nazareth. And who is Mary and Joseph? And because of all these things, the children of Israel had a hard time following after the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says here, And when you saw him, there is nothing known beauty uh, that we should desire him for. Verse 3, He is despised and rejected of men. <coughs> A man of sorrows. What a, what a way to characterize the Lord Jesus Christ. A man of sorrows. Have you ever thought about that? Just pondered that? Why he is characterized as such? A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And one of the great things that makes Jesus Christ this wonderful high priest is that he is acquainted, he is familiar. Uh, with our griefs and our sorrows. And when we go to Him in prayer, He knows those things. And He has been through some of those things Himself. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from Him. He was despised, and we what? Esteemed Him not. This morning we're looking at the subject of esteeming 
the right things, giving them proper value. And when Christ loses value in your life, eyes, in your life, then everything else begins to crumble as well, surrounding your spiritual, your spiritual life. Let's keep reading here, verse number four. Surely he hath borne our sorrow, our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, stricken of God, smitten, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And when Christ doesn't have that proper place or value in our life, um, everything else. Boy, it's hard to value those things that uh, really matter when Christ is not at the forefront of our life. And so the first thing that we need to look at here this morning is when we're esteeming those things and having the right value, uh, proper perspective towards those things that are important, it must be that Christ has the number one seat. Uh, take your Bibles, look over here at Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. When, when Christ loses the value in our eyes, listen, the things that He values become less valuable to us. What does Christ value in this life? What, what is He interested in your life? Or what aspects of it? Uh, those things are important to Him, and when He doesn't matter as much, then those things don't matter as much as well. In Hebrews chapter number, oh, what did I say? Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. We're going to look at the, this next aspect of, of uh, what we esteem, what we value this morning. Look at Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 24. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Listen, verse 26. Esteeming valuing the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward Moses rather than enjoying the pleasures of Egypt and all the the fine dining the fine living the the easy life uh, he chose to suffer the reproach of Christ he associated himself with the children of Israel and if you remember, uh, when he next faces Pharaoh, he tells Pharaoh, hey, we must go and worship our God. So he identified himself with a completely different God, a different people, and was willing and, and, and rather wanting to go down that road than to live a lie and enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The Bible talks about sowing to the flesh and sowing to the spirit. And Moses was an example of, of one that esteemed uh, the right, proper things, and he sowed uh, to the Spirit, and he reaped eventually. It wasn't always easy for Moses. He he was a meek man, but boy, he was he was faced with a huge responsibility taking the children of Israel out of Egypt. But he would much rather be identified with Christ and even uh, with with uh, the children of Israel than the people of Egypt. And uh, that's a difficult thing when you put yourself in Moses' shoes and you you see what he valued. Um, especially when there's a reproach connected with it. Uh, take your Bibles, look over here at Job chapter number 23. Job chapter number 23. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. There may come a time when we have to, as a Christian, take a stand and identify ourselves with uh, Christ in a very big public way. Um, when my wife and I had a chance to go to uh, Poland several years back in 06, uh, we went to Auschwitz. Anybody ever been there before? Okay. Very sobering place. Very sobering place. And they have walls and walls and rooms and rooms of different artifacts there. And of course, uh, one image that you've always seen is maybe uh, people walking along a street with, uh, their, with their garb, but then they have that star of, of David that was either sewn or pinned onto their, to their clothing. And basically, they had to identify themselves as being a Jew lest they be caught and killed. And uh, at the time, uh, especially at the beginning, they didn't know what was going on, and many of them taken to a camp, or, or they were thinking they were being just led away, not knowing exactly what their fate may be. But it was almost a death sentence to
to have that Star of David uh, printed or, or, or pinned on you. And yet, many of them um, would put that on and identify him as such. Uh, for them, it was the law. And I wonder at some point, maybe, you know, um, our identifying with Jesus Christ might cost us something. We might not be led away to a concentration camp or, uh, or something like that, um, but it may cost us something to identify with Jesus Christ. And uh, at that time, maybe remember Moses willing to identify himself uh, with Jesus Christ and, and the, the reproach of Christ than with the riches of Egypt. During the tribulation period, um, there's going to be an opportunity to identify with this world or stand. And uh, during the tribulation period, there's there's an opportunity to take the mark of the beast, take the, the you know you, you you either get the the six 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 written on your palms or your your forehead, uh, you bow down to the image, right, and you're identifying with that system and that religious system, or you don't identify with it and could suffer the repercussions. And so it's almost like a, a flip flop. Uh, and so uh, in this life. Um, it's a blessing to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. It really is. I think it's an inspiration to see other Christians boldly identify with Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, 1, that the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. Uh, and I think it's a great pleasure to be able to go to a restaurant and bow your heads publicly, hold hands, whatever you want to do, and, and let the public know, hey, we're praying to our God for our food. And what a blessing that is to be able to do that. And what a testimony that is. Uh, maybe... Maybe some of you like to Bible, do a Bible study in the restaurant or whatever. There's a couple coffee places I like to do. I just put my Bible out there, all my study notes, and, and um, people are looking in. And, and I've had people come up to me, and some of them had said a whole lot. But they walk by my Bible and say, that's a good book right there. And then you just walk right past. You know, they don't want to say much more than just that. But it's identifying with something. It's identifying with God's Word, identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, to esteem those things that are, 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 are representative of God Himself, or, as we're going to look at next here, or His Word. Look at Job chapter number 23. Job chapter number 23. Uh, even in the Olympics, there's all these people praying, and, you know, you, you wonder... Who they're praying to exactly? You wonder well, what's going on there, but you know. Um, but I know there are some Christian people that are saved and that that do want to give glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ for for whatever He's able to do through them, and so uh, appreciative of that. Job chapter twenty three, uh, look at verse number twelve. It says, "Neither have I gone back from the commandment of His lips." This is Job speaking of of God. I have esteemed. The words of his mouth more than my what? Necessary food. Necessary food. And so Job is looking at God's word, his commandments, and say, hey, I've lifted these things up. These are of great value here. I, 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 I feel as though there's a, there's a, these are worthy of, of, of lifting up. And, uh, and, and of course, in this comparison here, he's talking about his own food. And <laughs> who doesn't like food? Right, and so it's good. He's associating with getting in the Word of God even before eating his food. Look at Psalms one nineteen. Psalms one nineteen. Psalms one nineteen. Look at verse one twenty eight. Psalms one nineteen, verse number one twenty eight. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts. Concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. And here, David, of course, esteeming God's word, esteeming uh, its precepts, and uh, boy, I hope that our young people here value, man, value the book. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number uh, three, you know, um, I just went blank on that one. Um, Trust the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. And how does He do that? Thy Word. The Word. The Word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And so, uh, not just for our young people as they make decisions in their life, but also as couples. You know, we've got a new married couple here, right? Boy, this is exciting. This is a new <laughs> new adventure. Um, and now just, just getting out of the car or getting out of the house and going and doing your own thing, now you got somebody else to think about. 
and it just gets more and more complicated as you go along with children and all those other things. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. But life changes. Life changes. And uh, making good decisions early on are so important. It's easy to make bad decisions. Generally, it's when we just do it on our own. We don't look to the Lord for, for answers. And we, just, uh, we just make those own decisions. But when we look to God and His Word, and we esteem the Word of God and His precepts as, 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 our necess as a necessity, God will direct us and lead us and show us exactly how to be the couple, how to be the family, how to be the individual, the grandparent, the, the son, the daughter that we ought to be, um, holding up the Word of God. The Bible says that he, he, he values the Word of God, you know, he puts it above his very name. And so today, the reason we have a lot of problems, not just because sin, but I think it's because we do not esteem the Word of God like we ought to. We put a lot of things up there. And um, you talk to the average Christian today, they don't know this book. They don't, they, they're not in it, they're not reading it, they're not memorizing it, they're not meditating upon it, they're not living by it, they're doing their own thing. But they're a Christian. I'm just saying this morning, boy, you need to be in the Word of God. You need to know what it says. You need to help it define who God is. And if you don't, then you'll define Him in your own, in your own way. And that's, that's dangerous. All right. So esteem the Lord Jesus Christ, and when you do, you value the things that He values. But we also need to esteem uh, the uh, the reproach of Christ over an easier life. Um, it's easy to do easy things. It's hard to do hard things. But I challenge you this morning: do the hard thing. Suffer the reproach of Christ. Stand for Christ. Stand for the right thing. And then esteem the Word of God. Next, look over here at Philippians chapter number two. Ephesians, Philippians, Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 3. Philippians chapter number 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Alright, so the next thing that we need to esteem as a Christian is other people. And how do we do it? Better than ourselves. We esteem them better than ourselves. That's hard to do sometimes. You ever find that challenging? Trying to put other people before yourself? You ever feel like you're always in second or third or fourth or fifth, sixth place? And just every once in a while you'd like to be first? <laughs> yeah, it's easy to do that. Um, especially moms, right? Moms and wives, because you're always taking care of, of others. And um, yeah, but that's... That's, that's your calling in life, to, to, to be that, that mom that God wants you to be, to be that wife that God wants you to be. You're esteeming others continually. It's a, it's a good thing. Better than yourselves. Not an easy thing, but God, God will help you do that. Um, I'm so thankful that he, he thought of me when he came down to this earth. And he went to that cross and he died in my place. You know, he didn't do it for himself, he did it for me. Christ was constantly putting people in front of himself. He didn't need a way of salvation. I needed a way of salvation. Uh, he didn't need any more grace. I needed grace. He didn't need forgiveness. I needed forgiveness. And even today, as I pray to Him, uh, most of the time I want to spend some time just thanking Him. But there are times when I say, hey, I could use this, or I need this, or I need that, right? Uh, he doesn't need any of those things. He's good, but he's, he's always got that listening ear and, and willing to provide what we need. Uh, we have a selfless Christ. Um, we we're reading this week about the story of the of the Good Samaritan, and uh, the question was posed, "Who is my neighbor?" And then Christ lays out the story of uh, a, a man that was beaten and uh, stripped of his clothing and stripped of all his goods. And uh, there was a priest that walked by, and a Levite that walked by, and then the Samaritan, right? And and at the end. Uh, the Samaritan gave that beaten man his horse or his donkey, his ass, put him on him, and he walked. You know, we're not told how far he had to walk to the nearest town. But he inconvenienced himself. He put this man on his ride. And then he poured oil and he poured wine into his wounds. 
And maybe he had saved that for something else. Maybe that was a trading thing, or maybe that was for his own nourishment, but he poured that into that man. And as he walked him to that inn, he provided money for this man to be put up and taken care of. And he says, after I leave, if there's anything more that this man needs, I will pay it. And so he put himself out financially. We don't even know how long he was diverted off of his path. Sometimes it's really hard to do. But that's esteeming someone better than yourself. Giving of your time, of your substance, inconveniencing yourself. It's one thing to give. Uh, uh, some people have that gift of giving. I don't mind giving, but I don't like to be inconvenienced a lot. <laughs> I like to have my schedule, right? And I like to stay on schedule. It's hard to stop everything and inconvenience yourself and do something for me. But that's esteeming somebody better than myself. There's value in that. Christ values that in our life. When we esteem others better than ourselves, Christ values that in our life. Because that's why it's in here. He values the Word of God. He values uh, that we take a stand for Him, that we bear the reproach. These are all things that we need to esteem. And then, and then fourthly, there's, there's, only, there's only these things in Scripture. I'm giving you every single one of them that I found. And so I didn't, I didn't make this last one up. <laughs> uh, let's read this one. It's about taking care or, or esteeming your pastor. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. These are, all, these are all of them in Scripture. All the things that it mentions to, that we are supposed to esteem. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Verse number 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. And so if God has given you a pastor that loves you and wants to give you the word of God, it's saying you need to esteem them in love for their work's sake. All right? So what they're doing, the... the it doesn't matter if it's a spiritual work or a physical work. Generally, it goes hand in hand. There's a lot of those things. And if you have a pastor, you know, some of you are visiting uh, visiting us here this morning. And you have a pastor. Uh, let me encourage you to esteem them very highly for their, for their work. And um, uh, I'm thankful for the men that God put in my life. Um, pastor DeMichael over at Church of Valley. Um, I've got other pastor friends that, that are, are a great encouragement to me and a help to me. And I, boy, I, I appreciate them. There's a lot of guys that can call any given day, and I know that they're going to be a help and a blessing to me. And so the last, the last thing that we're command, not commanded, but we're admonished to do and beseeched to do here, it says, is to, um, it says, and are over you in the Lord, admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. And so, esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. You know, it's simple things, really. It, uh, it could be a word of encouragement. It could be uh, a phone call. It could be a letter. It could be anything like that. Shake, handshake, uh, a hug. Jason gives me hugs all the time. And um, just words of encouragement. And I, I, I think there's a number of reasons for this this morning. And we'll end with this. Um, there are a lot of front lines when any army advances in a battle. There's a front line. There's an imaginary line, right? This is where we're at. We're going to take take ground. We're going to advance. And that front line, you have some type of a, a command uh, where there is strategy to move that line in one particular direction or another. But there's got to be somebody in charge on that front line to help direct that thing. And that's generally the hottest part of the battle. That, that is where the enemy doesn't want you to advance at all. And uh, in our country, for, for quite some time, there's not been a ton of advancing. You see it just kind of sprinkled around here and there. Uh, and, and as a pastor, if you have a pastor that loves souls, he loves the Bible, he loves his people that he gets to pastor, uh, he's going to be on that front line. He's going to try to help take ground with these people, advancing, seeing people 
come to Jesus Christ as their Savior, helping families in relationships that are broken, that are falling apart, encouraging uh, discipleship amongst the people. All these things are front lines that you're trying to constantly move forward. And there's just a constant bombardment right there at that front line. And your pastor's going to be getting it. Not only the pastor, but also his family. And, um, and you need to pray for them. You encourage them. You need to love them uh, for their work's sake. Sometimes pastors, uh, they think about taking a back seat. Hey, boy, that would be nice. Just coming in, sitting down, listening to the message, singing the song, and then just leaving. There are times when you just think that would be nice. That would be, that would be really easy to do. Uh, but God has not put that in their heart to do that. Um, but there's always that temptation. Uh, is it worth it? Are we advancing? Are we making a difference in anybody's life? Uh, uh, is, uh, I could be doing this, or I could be doing this, or are we, uh, is this really worth it at the end, right? And, and so you need to pray for them. You need to encourage them. You need to love them uh, for their work's sake. And I think it's one of the most important works that we do in this life is uh, preaching the Word of God, helping families, seeing people get saved, discipleship, sending people out, training people uh, for the work of the ministry around the world. It's an important work. And it's, it's not a, one of those things that can be done overnight. It's a continual effort to move forward and advance. Esteeming the right things, giving them their proper value. The first thing is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we esteem Him, and we put Him in His proper place, the things that Christ values, then they become the things that we value. But if we don't esteem Him, the things that Christ values become less important to us. And so, with that, the reproach of Christ, the Word of God, others, and your preacher. Things that we ought to value. 